Hi there everyone and welcome to yet another What of Worth It Back to Port podcast. As you all know, by now we have yet another <laughs> World of Warships Legends CC with us today. Tommy Boy 601. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I've I've always listened to the podcast on and off and I'm I'm more it's very exciting to be a guest here. Oh, it's very good to have listeners join as speakers. A lot of conspiracy theories happening in World of Warships Legends, but <laughs> this is a, a, a question that we're going to ask later. But uh, why those conspiracy theories come up in Legends? Please give us a preview of what's going on. I, you know, are, are they, cons- I think one... We have, at this point, a very vested audience in the game. And we're always out there on the hunt for something new. I do feel like, I know some of my videos are cons- can be considered conspiratorial. But I, I, I feel like those are ones that are fun to pontificate. Fun to, to like, oh, this is here and like usually there's there's a reason for that and let's let's try to dig in and figure out why uh if whether it was a mistake on our wonderful community manager side where they accidentally left a ship um in in a certain like port screenshot in a video or you know it's the little details that if you're on alert you can figure out and it's always fun to be able to point those out and bring out the theories behind what could be going on or why that that little p- nugget of information is there okay perfect perfect but uh, before going to the juice that i like to say or give me the sauce before that first of all let's say how you started out your journey here in world of warships legends could you please mind tell us how you got started with your channel your youtube i mean your discord community how you get involved also in legends was the first game and how you managed to keep up uh, such a good pace in World of Warships. Yeah, sure. So um, what what happened is I went to school for journalism um, at USF, but the St. Pete campus. Um, and I was like, you know what? I want to go into video games journalism. So I made a packet together, um, got an interview over at the, the one and only IGN.com and basically got told I don't have enough... Uh, practical experience and like video making and stuff. So that summer I was like, okay, um, I'll get a part-time job at Disney. I I did the math. I could commute from St. Pete, Florida to Orlando, which is my hometown, um, and work three days a week at Disney and then dedicate the other four days a week to making videos to start up a YouTube channel. And I did that for about... A, uh, three quarters of a year um, and you know I, I initially started um, just kind of like my first real attempt at making videos was with the release of Metal Gear Solid 5 um, and I have like one video that popped off really well for that one and it still gets recommended in the algorithm here and there and then I had another game pop off which was uh, Rainbow Six Siege and I was a Siege YouTuber uh, for a good chunk of time and that got me up to like 8,000, 6,000, I think like 6,000 subs. Um, and I, it was just something I kind of did on and off. Eventually, uh, after a little bit of time, Disney wanted me to go full-time, I ended up going full-time with Disney. And then the YouTube channel would become a thing that I would do, but then I wouldn't do. Basically, if I had a girlfriend, I wouldn't be doing it because I'd be spending time with them. If I did have a girlfriend, it was something that would slowly fall off. Um, but like whenever I had free time, it would eat at me, not be, not making videos. I don't know if anyone else has that, like part of them where you, you feel bad if you're not working or like there's, there's just a little like itch inside you. Um, and I was, I was, I was on one of these kicks of making videos and I was doing a series called free to play Fridays. And it was one week after world of warships legends came to be. And I made a video on it, got hooked, uh, then fell into a phase of, of not making videos, 
continued to play World of Warships Legends because it's it's a I found I find the game incredibly fun. Uh, and then eventually, uh, what started this rekick was um, the pandemic. Um, basically, my I had got I uh, my my girlfriend had uh, lost her job because we're both we both work for the mouse, and I was like, well, I can try to start doing YouTube again, and it just sort of took off in the way it has, and now that it's like gained steam, it's been something that I've been able to kind of integrate into my life as far as uh, making sure I'm having that appropriate work personal life and now essentially third job YouTube uh, balance. And, you know, for me, what that looks like is I play warships most of the week on my breaks in the morning. Uh, and then I record all of the games. I kind of have a hit list in my head a week ahead of time of what videos I want to make one week before. Then on the weekend on either Saturday or Sunday, I pop out five videos or I try to get five videos done. Um, and those get scheduled Monday through Friday, rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. I hope that Excellent. answers the question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you covered a lot of questions together, so <laughs> you free me sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very, very comprehensive that you say. Uh, I saw that you are also, when you are on vacations, for example, you program, you pre-program your videos and you always have uh, videos for your audience, for your listeners, for your viewers. I mean, you really program all your stuff together and you just said it a few seconds ago that you are programming all your lists and all your stuff. So that's very good because you are preparing your work and that means that you are um, you are liking what you are doing and you are doing almost professionally. So I really like that. So uh, I would like also to ask you if you play with other YouTubers, I mean, if you have any connections with other streamers, with uh, people from the community, with uh, your fellow COSIP uh, uh, CCs. I mean, uh, what is your your company? I mean, uh, would, would you prefer playing with other streamers? You have an upper stream so people can join you. How is your uh, streaming uh, program going? So streaming is one of those things where as... Re so streaming was something I was trying to do a lot of uh, in my day to day, I am like 90% of the time I am solo just because I, I play at random times and I'm, I, I'm a bit of an introvert in that way. If I don't want to like reach out to people and be like, Hey, do you want to play with me? I no, no, I'm, I'm, I would much rather just, I'm going to hop on. There are a couple of things I want to accomplish. These are the ships I want to play this. I want to get these games cause I have that kind of mental hit list in my head. But as far as like when I do stream, I was streaming on Fridays and then my now fiance, uh, her day, her days off changed to Friday. So I, I have been meaning to try to find a new day that makes it more convenient. And I'm always more than happy to stream. I think the person who's a, who streams, I appear on most often are probably like uh, fat guy gaming, dirty Mike, just cause he'll post in the CC discord. Like anyone want to, division up and if i'm free i'm like yeah it's always fun to hop onto uh dirty mike aka fat guy gaming streams um like last night uh i saw uh zarkoon had posted that he was gonna stream around the same time that i was thinking of streaming i didn't know what i was gonna stream but when he posted he was gonna stream i was like you know what let's see if zarkoon wants to to uh to party up um tactic was supposed to join us but then zarkoon got tired and i did too so uh Unfortunately, Tactic wasn't able to, to, to join us. Um, that, that's all on us. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I have, I'm not opposed to playing with other people, but I feel like socially I would rather get invited than being the one to instigate it, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I can feel that. Excellent. So let's go to the juice that people want to see to learn, to eat, <laughs> make a name of it, yeah, to feel uh, conspiracy videos and the videos about the commander reset, the videos you make about uh, I deleted World of Warships Legends game and all the, the special thumbnails that it keeps coming to my eyes in <laughs> a few last months from ver various people 
around the globe, uh, various YouTubers, they try to make a perfect thumbnail with clickbait uh, situations, big titles that uh, when you see the video, it's a totally different uh, inside. Uh, the title starts with something else uh, and the video ends with uh, something else. So how do you came up with those titles? I mean, are you, are you, are you desperate for some uh, views? I don't really think that you are, but uh, do the clip, clickbait uh, titles work? And how do you came up with them? Um, so like, let's let's take this this week. I did do the I installed I uninstalled the game, which is I think the 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 title we want to talk about the most. Um, one I it was it was something where I was like, oh, this is a bit different, um, and you know the content of of the video is. I did uninstall the game, but then I reinstalled it. And if you watch the full video, it kind of explains like, hey, um, I uninstalled the game. And when I uninstalled it, it was at this many gigabytes. And then when I reinstalled it, it was 20 gigabytes smaller, which I think is the new, which is the kernel there, right? That's the, that's the interesting piece of information. Cause like, cause like if, if it was, I, I I had a 50 gigabyte install file. I uninstalled and I reinstalled it and it was still 50 gigabytes. I don't think that's a video. That that that's just hey, it turns out data's data and it's the same size. That doesn't make an interesting like that that isn't that isn't newsworthy. But um you know, I I I had been experiencing in the game um what felt like connection issues um and latency issues and personally i don't i don't have the equipment to be able to you know it's not like we have active ping where i can see in the in the game what the ping is um i can only go by feel which i know is very contradictory to you know the the other styles of video the the commander reset the the accuracy room like the that sort of testing which is what i'd prefer to stand stay on because hey i'm able to to get out there you know show show in a scient I call it scientific adjacent just because we don't have the correct sample size. It's not like we have training rooms where we can replicate the scenario over and over again. So we can only attempt to do it and try to draw conclusions from that. But from here, you know, there was, I had the, the video of, Hey, it's came in at 50. I uninstalled, I reinstalled. I, I, uh, it came back as 30 and it does. Let's be clear. It like making clickbait titles, um, I think the clickbait does work, right? A flashy headline does work. Would I classify that as like the 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 bad kind of clickbait, right? There's the bad kind of clickbait where there's no kernel of truth to the sentence. And that's not what that is, right? What I said, what I titled the video did occur in the video. And then I walked you through a, a narrative, a scenario about why, why that, why that title is there and why it's newsworthy. Now, if, if I didn't do it, yeah, no, I'm terrible. That's, that's clickbait and you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. But I think in this case, it was just a very good title. Yeah. A very good title. Meaning that if you guys haven't seen the Tommy boys video, you can see that he's going through each step and he's justifying every single step and we end up uh, i'm not gonna say how the video ends because it's a spoiler and i don't want you to to ruin your video uh, you end up with a lot of better uh, gameplay and uh, your issues have fixed meaning that there is a lot of bloatware sometimes and update after update install after install installing and all the stuff on, on consoles may bring some bugs, issues and whatever. So your video was on point and I have to say that it was very, very informative. Now, one, also, yeah. one thing that was pointed out to me after I published the video, which I think may have may be the source of the delays. Um, so someone pointed this out to me in the 50 gigabytes. It actually says the game is installed on two different drives. So I don't know if 
somehow I double installed it on both an internal SSD and an external hard hard disk. And it's and if when I'm launching the game, like because once again, we, we the Xbox is a box, we can't like dive into it. Um, if it's just picking one of the versions um, of the game and, you know, I'm feeling good latency when it decides to pick the SSD version and I'm feeling worse latency when it's trying to read it off the hard disk. Cause when I initially brought up the concerns of, uh, of additional latency, uh, blip was like, we do know that there is an issue with hard disk PS fours where this occurs. So I don't like, I was like, oh, that that is an interesting little kernel um, that, you know, people were able to point out. And I was like, ooh, like still what occurred is interesting. And I had a couple of people report that the same thing had occurred to them where they had multiple. They they had the large install file. And then when they uninstalled and reinstalled, it felt better. But once again, we're walking into a world or we're walking into a scenario where we're at confirmation bias. OK, so thank you very much. Also, I need a quick comment on the latest video that uh, Pick uh, published a few days ago. It says that he's uh, kicked out of the CC program. How do you feel about that? I mean, seeing a fellow co-ship uh, going off the CC program. It's up to you if you want to say something, but... I mean, I, I think... I think one of the things... It's, it's an interesting... It's in, like, we, I had a feeling it was coming, um, just cause peak, you know, he's, he's made those sorts of videos over and over. And I think it, the way the CC struck, the CC program is structured, um, it can, uh, incentivize or it, it, it can distance. What am I trying to say? Uh, basically because peak is a huge streamer, um, and it behooves streamers who are on, because one thing I have to say about Peak, that boy can stream. That boy, he he can, he goes for hours and he has an endurance that I do not have when it comes to streaming. Um, I am, you know, I wake up at six or seven in the morning and I can see that Peak literally just got off an eight or nine hour stream. And I'm like, like that is incredible talent right there. Um, but I also feel like part of me thinks in order to keep people engaged for eight, nine hours, you gotta be a little crazy. You, you got, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be engaging and a little crazy. And I think because of that, you know, we've seen, I think, you know, part of, part of why Spartan ended up leaving the program or was removed from the program was a, 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 a anger that would come out on stream and i think for people who stream it there is a incentive to be in that style while streaming and you have to and it and it's kind of a directly it, it doesn't it's not incentivized to do that to be in the program if that makes yeah. sense exactly because streaming is not for everyone you have to have some guts especially if you want to go over two or three hours playing the game because you know there are times that you play 10 minutes and you're gonna th you want to throw your your controller off your window you want to throw your console off your tv station and all that stuff so streaming needs some nerves some courage you need the mentality to be there and offer something to your viewers or your listeners so yeah and I'm coming from the Pix questions because I'm reading at the moment some comments uh, on the Reddit about Pix. They are commenting about Pix and all that stuff, but also in the comments you see constantly. Uh, I prefer, for example, uh, T Boon, Tommy Boy, Tactic Angel, etc., etc. So you are on the very first four or five CCs that people recommend in the comments. So that's something very good. How do you think that came up? I mean, you are going through uh, uh, amateur uh, guides for the people that start to starting the game, new player guides. Are you making uh, tutorials? What is your style that makes you so popular on, on people? Because they are recommending you 
and that's something not uh, that happening the random you can see after three comments tommy boy 61 tommy boy 601 tommy boy 601 so people are recommended you so that's something good how uh, from from where do you think that came up what is your speciality do people recommend you so honestly i don't know why people uh decide like i i think one thing i did when i was like okay i'm gonna try to become a uh, world of warships you know, I was going to try to turn the channel into a World of Warships channel. There's there's an active decision there. And at that time, CC program had already started. And what I did is I went down the list and I went, okay, hey, what is everyone in this program? What style of video do they do? They do? And more importantly, what niche isn't served within this community? Um, and the one that I tr tried to, the one that I tried to get in and the one that I like identified that did immensely help my channel was the sort of news channel. The, the one that like, Hey, this blog post came out. This is what's said in it. This is, this is what's going on. You know, this is like, you know, Hey, um, also they put out this free code. Let me put out the, the code that, and admittedly that has probably fallen off for me just because, um, the, the, the amount of commitment and the amount of time it took, to like, uh, I was like, I used to do like things like comment of the day where I would put a comment from the previous video in that, that became, um, I couldn't keep doing it just cause I wanted to be able to make all the videos at once. And you know, it, it kind of built up, but I think the reason people initially came to me was I, I found a small niche within the community of beyond the patch notes videos. Hey, here's the news. Hey, here's the guide on how on how this this uh, special event is working. Here's the breakdown. Here's how you how you do it. What you can get out of it for free because it's a free to play game. Uh, here's here's what you can do when you spend the money. Here's the best way to go about it. Like stuff like that. That's where and I still get very strong viewership on those style videos. It's just those style videos are few and far between because they they depend on war gaming to have news to come out. So then it becomes, okay, those are the pillars of my channel. What can I do to kind of fill out the rest of the time? And that's where I can kind of take the inspirations from the, the rest of the CCs of like, okay, this is how the community kind of likes to do review videos. Let's see if I can find my own voice within a review style video. Okay, t -Bull, he does great. He does great talk, talk through the game. Let me see if I can do that. That provides excellent kind of filler and call it filler, but you know, it, it is... I, I consider it a little bit of filler until the next kind of news video that I can put out. Yeah, perfect. So more to informative style and uh, you flash bringing the news at the moment they came up. So that's very good because you are giving the top information in the speed that you want exactly to your, uh, to your uh, viewers. So that's very good. Excellent. So let's go now to see uh, what the, com the community and the people around the podcast are asking about you. So let's start with the community questions and see how people uh, uh, want, what people want to learn about Tommy Boy 601. So first came me, where the hell that 601 came from on your nickname? There was this little game called RuneScape. And it turns out Tommy Boy, the username, not available. The username that was auto-generated and was available, Tommy mm -hmm. Boy 601. <laughs> so, granted, yeah. <laughs> so you took it, yeah. You took it and... Excellent, excellent. So that was the question. So, okay, let's see about crazy little square says, what is your most anticipated tier 8 ship coming to, t to the Tech 3 in the future and why? Ooh, to the tech tree. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna fill time with premiums while I go. Because here's a, here's another secret about me. I barely learn these ships um, up, <laughs> up until they become relevant for our game. Okay. Uh, once once it appears in a trailer or there's a hint of it, that's when I will study up on it. But I am not a World of Warships PC player, and therefore um, I am. I am not, 
like, familiar with the names yet. You're not a yeah, geek fami- on the name and the stuff. On the yeah, I, I become familiar with it right when it becomes necessary. Um, do, 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 do. I you know honestly the the tier the tier eight ship that I was looking forward to came this update like the Jutland, um, like that was that was I I love the British DDs. Um, Jutland's a fan. I I've been having a ton of fun with her. Um, I have a feeling in T minus two days when or a day and a half when the daring gets taken away from the CCs uh, because we have it on loan right now. Uh, but I will be going. I will be playing a lot more Jutland because she is essentially a mini daring. She just has about a two second longer reload on the main guns. But beyond that, the majority of her other stats exactly the same to daring uh and daring has been a fantastic ship and i've been just really really enjoying that as far as like other tier eights that i'm looking forward to um the the gxp return of elbing elbing is (laughs) is such a weird wonky little cruise destroyer that plays as a cruiser with excellent ap i had a blast with her and then like i know this will catch flack but I'm I'm here for the wonky and the zanius zany that will be Kearsage, if that ever comes. <laughs> okay, so another one. Uh, can you predict about Legends future? Mm. New battle modes, clan, etc. And the second one, please. How seriously you think while gaming notice players' feedback, complaints, suggestion? And he says also that I'm sure three steps at least compared with. Let's say Rockstar. Okay, that was a, a parenthesis in uh, in the question. So he asked about the future, if uh, new battle modes are coming, clans, uh, and what do you think about the feedback that people give? Is wargaming gaming listening? All those questions come from Rockablon, a member from Greece. So Excellent. what do you think about that? So as far as I like. I think there has been a conversation as of late. And this is, I don't know if it's going to make it into a video this week or will be a next week video, but about right now, the state of legendary tier, the state it feels at higher tiers where it feels like we don't have enough people, whether the game is getting stale and whether the uh, way to fix that is the new game modes. Personally, yeah, I think we need more game modes. We need more, uh, we need more maps. Um, I don't know if we're missing any, like, loved ones. I know, like, Ocean is one that we had temporarily, but I, I feel like Ocean is not a great experience, probably. Or, you know, maybe 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 we bring back Ocean and we have it proc, like, very, very low in the matchmaker. That way it becomes, like, a special time when you find Ocean, uh, when you find yourself on Ocean. But, like, I, I do hope we get new game modes, um... I think over on PC they have like, I think I've seen like an escort the like escort an airship or something like that from one side to the other, and it's and it's two teams have to kind of like follow it down the length of a map, and the the path ends up like getting near, and you can attempt to sink the other people, and you have to stay near the airship. Like th- an objective mode like that is fun. I I I do think like domination mode feels great in this game. And it's by far the way I would prefer to play this game. But I also just love objective objective modes overall. And capture the base really doesn't do it for me. So if we were able to add more objective modes, I would love it. So there's that. Line break onto how seriously do we think... Um, how much do they think... Do they follow or hear our feedback? And, you know, I think we... I think we have decent uh, as far as hearing it i think it's very good but i also think the realities of what wargaming is uh also may get in the way right um as I, there's when i first joined the the cc program i think i i talked about like um operation health which is if you're not familiar rainbow six siege uh they had some very large scale issues uh, in in their pipeline, and, and there were some major issues in the game. And what they came out and said was, "Hey, instead of doing a season for these three months, 
we're going to do something called Operation Health, where instead of doing an update for this quarter, we are going to do an update that only focuses on game health. So, unfortunately, there's not going to be like a new operator. There's not going to be a new map. There's not going to be anything tangibly here. But it's all going to be all, all of that dev time is actually going to focus on the back end of, of, of Siege, making everything more stable, better. And it was a massive success for them because it shored up the player base. It made it a platform where it grew for several years. Because if you remember, Siege was a weird little shooter that came out to meh sort of reviews, had a very dedicated community, and then grew. And part of that was Operation Health. When I brought that up to our current to our, our current devs, I forget who which one of the CMs told me. It was like, uh, basically, that the way... The, for lack of a better word, bean counting works at Wargaming is, you know, they they plan against, hey, we're going to release a battle pass. We're going to get X number of dollars. And this is all paraphrasing. I, I, I want to set that. But like the way I ended up taking it was, hey, we the way the way the bean counting works is every five to six weeks, we release a battle pass. We get about X dollars for the battle pass. We release two premium ships. We get about X dollars. Um, and there's a direct dev time to about how much money gets taken in sort of relationship. And we need to maintain that. Um, and it's and I think they've, they've tried and made the argument that an Operation Health style update would behoove us. But I don't think the, the higher ups um, were, yeah, were on board. Now, that's just the way I took it. Um, I don't know if that's exactly how it all went down, um, but that's kind of the way I I suspect it. Because I think our, our CM, our community team, absolutely fantastic. Um, and they, they do, I think they do a very good job of bubbling up the sentiments within the community to the dev team. Now, what are the realities? I don't know how big our dev team is, and I don't know what their capacity actually looks like, especially when it feels like a lot of what our, a lot of what our game is, is, hey, PC has these assets. We are going to convert, you're going to convert them over to console, make them work for console. And this is, this is essentially a, a split revenue, a new way to get additional revenue from that PC, from that PC work. So it's it's the console that follows up the PC style. And now we're gonna see and now with the introduction of the mobile, we may gonna see some different things, but the model will remain the same. The PC will follow the console, the console will follow the mobile the mobile will follow the console, etc. And all all those things they're gonna mix up to make revenue because it is a free-to-play game and war gaming always want to make money and that's not something wrong because it's their principle it is a company they have to pay <laughs> for wages yeah. they have to pay for their employees and all it's something that doesn't surprise me because they want to make money the yeah. way they want to make money it's up to them and they have the data they have the population they have all the numbers so they can squeeze it they can make it everything they want but as we we end up uh, together feedback is going up to the devs with a very good rate it's up to them what they're gonna do and how they're gonna follow the feedback of the community so exactly i think that you answered to the question of the guy and now let's go to another one so there is a three line 12000 if you absolutely needed a win which ship would you play given the current game and your play style so it's your play style against the current game the meta i think so if you want it desperately a win the easy answer i feel like is tier 4 kamikaze but <laughs> um but like if if it's if i'm if if i'm not taking that out my my favorite ship and the one that I still love going back to tier five Leander. She's such a fun ship. Um, or the ship that I find myself going and starting most of my, my days with, 
uh, tier six kid. I, I love the American gunboats and I love what kid can do. Um, and being able to hunt down, you know, the enemy DDs at tier six, it, it's a fantastic ship. And then you have the regular American guns, which are still excellent guns. Okay. <laughs> Special. Another one comes from Rock Saber. When did you learn of your ability to see into the future? Your tier 8 picks were on spot. So it was a video, guys, that uh, Tommy Boy was cutting off the frames of a teaser that World of Warships Legends produced in the YouTube. So I think that Tommy Boy guessed all the ships <laughs> that was on the teaser trailer. So it was a lot of study. Please tell us about it. It was it was a bit of it was absolutely a bit of study. I think there had been a rough consensus as to the style of these boats and what they were. Um, truth be told, I had I sort of had a generalized and a good kind of guess of okay, we started the game and like the first four lines were Americans, uh, Japanese, uh, J- uh, Brits, and Germans. Okay, a lot of these boats kind of look like that. Let's go launch the PC version because uh, since since the time I've been able, you know, thanks to the funds generated by the channel, I've been able to upgrade to an actual decent gaming PC, and I can have regular World of Warships here, and I can dive in and like examine the models and go, okay, what what is stuff that stands out here, and can I find an angle that matches up into the into the trailer and that was kind of my my like okay this definitely has that like german feel let's see if i can find the exact like piece of ship that matches up to that um and that was kind of the way i went about that video perfect 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 and let's go to another one Uh, rockstabber also says midwave or hakuri what do you want midwave or how does that spell? Haikyoryu? Hi, hi, I will say that uh, I spent my 30... I, I told myself I didn't have the funds to buy both the Bureau projects. Um, so I bought one of them and I bought Midway. Um, having played both of them, uh, I felt like, one, I'm not a huge carrier player. But if I was to play a carrier, the one I would want to play is Midway. Just because of the way those bombs perform. They are massive damages. They they have just massive damage, uh, and they were they were. I found Midway a little bit more fun to play. Definitely a little more challenging because the way you definitely have to like conserve those planes and understand like, okay, these ships have this style of AA bubble. The, I this is where I can fly. This is where I can poke and prod. This is this is where it's safe for me to be and not burn my planes. But when you master that, it it is a ship that just delivers huge amounts of damage and it's fun to see as 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 much as yeah as much as you hate being on the receiving end of it it's definitely fun to be on the other end it's fun engaging and very not easy to play because it has uh, some small learning curve because you need to adjust to the current style of that ship but it's very fun to play and you end up having very good games. So I would agree with you. Very really nice. So last question is for Mr. Fighter. What was your opinion when you first started playing the game and what are your opinions on it now? So start to end, no end, I mean start till now. Do you think that the game changed? Uh, do you think that the game is getting uh, uh, repeated? It's fresh, it's old. What do you think about the game? Um, so, one funny thing is because I literally made a video when this game came out uh, where I was featuring free-to-play games, I do have, like, my words on record of what I thought about this game. And when I when I first started playing, I found this game... Like, I'd, played, I'd gotten into World of Tanks before and I fell off right when... Uh, it became very apparent that, oh, pre- you have to shoot premium ammo to really perform well in this game. I, I don't want, uh, I don't really want to do that. So that's, you know, once that, once that 
that dawn comes on you at like tier five or six in in tanks. That's when I fell off. Um, and this game came out and the thing that stuck out to me instantly, which is why I kind of fell in love with this game, was two-pronged. One, um, the smallest ship in this game can still do damage to the biggest ship, right? If you were playing World of Tanks, your little light tank, not not gonna really do much against a heavy tank. There, there, there isn't, you don't really have a chance here. Here, if you're in a destroyer, you got the torpedoes, and if you have the skill to land the torpedo on a cruiser, on a battleship, you're gonna do damage to them. Yeah, um, you're gonna nail them for sure. I mean, you're gonna do something. Yeah, you're gonna do something. But. You're gonna do something. <laughs> there's there's a direct interaction in there, and that's that little change is what I was like, oh yeah, World of Warships. This is this is much more this is much more fun and engaging. Um, the other half of me is this is a game. Personally, I don't. I am someone who keeps like YouTube or keeps a TV show on all the time while playing. And this is, I don't have to give a hundred percent of my brain power into like, it is not, it is not Twitch reaction times. It is, it is something where cool. I fired a salvo. I got 30 seconds. I can kind of keep an eye on the minimap, see where ships are positioning, kind of plan out my next shot in 30 seconds if I'm in a battleship. Um, and also keep the TV on and enjoy a podcast, enjoy, enjoy something. And those were my two big draws when I got into it. Now, you know, Flash, flash forward, what, we're coming up on three years, I feel like? Two? Three years. Three years. Um, I think we are seeing... We we are getting to the point where it does... It is starting to feel repetitive. It's still, it's still a solid gameplay loop, right? It's still, I think, you know, the way Halo kind of is still a fun... Because the the satisfaction of the guns grenade melee loop of halo i think world of worship still has a very satisfying gameplay loop but it is i do think starting to feel a little stale personally i am not a gameplay designer i do not know what they could do on like a balance level or a meta level of like hey let's go ahead you know personally maybe let's go ahead and introduce a ton more mod slots that way or not mod slots but mod actual modules so that then the builds get way more diversified that's one thing i would love to see but i don't know if that if you know we've they've tried that and it turns out well no uh people are still just going to pick their full accuracy builds and that's that's all we're going to get Imagine if we if we are going in uh, World of Warships Legends mercenaries like the <laughs> World of Tanks did. <laughs> oh. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And by the way, because I was interacting in the chat at the moment, I have a graph there uh, when people can see how how the World of Tanks console uh, bounce up the bad reviews after the update 6 and it's going better and better after time after time after update and it's trying to bounce back the old good days but uh, not in the world war 2 era in the new era in the in the era of the cold war so that's a mini parenthesis about uh, the chat and because we said mercenaries and uh, world of tanks so yeah. okay we said the last the last uh, questions now you have the opportunity to ask me something <laughs> personally <laughs> it is your last question on me before we close the stream because we are Ooh. already 45 minutes and we tend to close it around uh, half an hour oh wow I'm, so well, I'm you glad. have you yeah you have that one <laughs> one, one opportunity before the community if one anyone from the community to join, we're gonna give you ten minutes to join and ask uh, Tommy Boy questions. So Let's you see. have the opportunity to ask me something if you like. Let's go with uh, if you could eat, going off of our me pontificate, pontificating about uh, new modules. If you could introduce a new module, what would it be, and what slot should it go into? Okay. So personally, uh, if I was going to to something on a module or uh, on a new feature to pump things up, I would go with um, premium consumables. 
like the World of Tanks, saying that you gonna have a special consumable that will give you something in a short amount of time, an extra, and that it's gonna be used for only once a time. I mean, you can guess up extra sonar for around 15 seconds, extra penetration for around 10 seconds or one salvo, you know, something like that. Extra consumable. I will not go with modifications because modifications are not easy digestible from uh, new players. They need to search a lot, they need to, to think uh, if they're going hull B, A, hull C, hull, you know, many yeah. varieties of uh, hulls and that needs some uh, variety of knowledge and also to keep keen on the stats that they are seeing and how that works because it is a very complicated game. So, especially with the introduction of the mobile, I'm thinking something like that, because they spoiled something on uh, a news about something special coming on the, on the backlog of the development. So, I asked Blick something about that, but he's saying that my guessing was as good as him. So, he never re revealed anything because he never knew something. As, as he told back on time. So I'm really guessing something about that, that it may come or it may... Because they said that it's going to change the pace of the game in a certain time. So I'm guessing something like that. So if you ask me personally, uh, if I was a developer, I would go with that. I know some people may dislike that uh, because... Um, some people, uh, and I'm comparing that with the World of Tanks. Do you remember the era with, where World of Tanks had uh, a small time that they were testing the patch? It was a consumable that it called patch, me meaning that you had to regenerate your health for a certain amount of time. So it was something that people disliked a lot in World of Tanks. Interesting. I was, I was so, I was not even in like. I was so not into the meta of World of Tanks. I was just like, oh, I like American. I'm going to try. Th like, there, I was not, I did not break the barrier of like looking into a YouTube video to understand the systems. I was just like, tanks shoot big gun, yay. Arcade style, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So they tried to, to bring something to that, but it failed in, even in the early times. So I, I don't know the reason. I really don't know what happened. Uh, but now in SIPs, I like something familiar. Premium consumables. Put anything you like on the consumable as premium. Uh, buy it with silver or with doubloons. <laughs> you know how that goes. Yes. World of Tanks, yeah, you can buy it. And you can use it only once. So imagine that we are in a German destroyer, for example, and you have only 4.5 kilometers sonar. But uh, with that uh, premium consumable, you can range up your sonar up to 6 kilometers for only 10 seconds. Will you use it? Will you buy it for doubloons or for uh, silver? For, uh, for around, how I'm gonna say, uh, half million silver or, or less? I don't know. Will you buy it? I... it it's, it's really interesting because it gives you something. See, and I, 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 would, I would disagree. I think that's a poor game. I don't like that. I, I think I think you have part of because I think that adds an additional layer of knowledge that the the player has to acquire right right now it's that's a German ship 4.6 kilometer sonar Th then after that it's oh it's 4.6 but if they did this thing it could be up to six and like planning that attack like for, as far as like new player ac acquisition and their knowledge, I think that that feels like oh they did the th this thing, which means like the decision making tree there. I I'm not a huge fan of it. I like the that's this ship. This is what sh I should be able to expect. Not this is what I should be able to expect. Or if they decide to do the one thing and I'm trying to push their smoke with my German ship, which ha doesn't have as far you know that thing. That's why I kind of like the the mod slots because like if you like added extra detectability on incoming torps to mod slot two that that could that you know stuff like that i don't know that's the ship deal with it 
or uh, <laughs> make yeah. it happen with the modifications. Yeah, I mean, make it happen with the modifications. Yeah. So probably, I don't know. They have to to search a lot about it, but we heard no words about it. So exactly, knows? we will see when yeah. it comes. Yeah, but I'm also as a, a tactic said on the chat because he said that I feel Tommy should be engaged this if he was engaged gold ammo in a world of uh, tanks also the thing that make me uh, unhappy with uh, premium ammunition you have extra penetration for example and uh, you couldn't deal your armor you couldn't bounce any cells because premium ammo was always better and you couldn't do nothing against it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it, it was always penetrating your plates so it's something that really frustrates me, but it was a future, so we can do nothing about it. So maybe we're gonna see some similar. Who knows? Who knows? So okay. So guys, that's it. That was uh, Tommy Boy. Thank you very much for joining the podcast. I really enjoyed it, and I hope we can uh, have you more times that one. But uh, absolutely, how do it was. Yeah. It was how a good do, time. Yeah, how do people say um, a thousand mile journey starts with a simple step? So <laughs> the first step was here. 